In New Delhi, protesters have been holding candlelit vigils for the 20th anniversary of the day when 40 tons of lethal methyl isocyanate leaked from the Bhopal fertilizer works in central India. 20 years on from the world's worst industrial accident, over 3,000 people were killed, half a million still affected. But this day of protest has been surreal. At 10.09 this morning, this suddenly flashed up on the news wires. Dow Chemical says accepts full responsibility for Bhopal disaster. Even bigger, a minute later, 10.10, and they put a price on it. Dow Chemical says has 12 billion compensation plan for Bhopal victims. At 10.25, Reuters had quotes from a Dow company man, Jude Finisterra, apologies, billions for the victims, sackcloth, ashes, it was all here, some BBC scoop. Today, I am very, very happy to announce that today, for the first time, Dow is accepting full responsibility for the Bhopal catastrophe. By 11.18 this morning, the news wires were in corporate denial. Dow Chemical says there's no basis whatsoever in BBC Bhopal report. And all day the BBC have been facing up to an honest mistake. Well, earlier today we carried an interview with someone purporting to be from Dow Chemical, a company which subsequently bought the plant from Union Carbide. This interview was inaccurate and part of an elaborate deception. In Delhi tonight, the protesters were bemused by the Western prank, but their fight for justice and to get the plant finally cleaned up continues. With something as massive as this, we'll have to force them to be accountable. We'll have to find ways for them to be made accountable. All that 20 years to the day from the disaster, and the Union Carbide plant stands brooding even now over Bhopal. Today's unlikely corporate humiliation of a U.S. chemical giant was all about reminding the world that Bhopal remains an unhealed sore. When we received the uh, invitation, we, uh, it, it took us a little while to decide what to do, but we decided that um, essentially Dow has been uh, promulgating a hoax um, by which they've convinced people that they can't do anything about Bhopal, that they cannot accept responsibility. And we wanted to prove that that was not accurate and to show that they could, in fact, easily accept responsibility and that there was something very concrete they could do about it. They could simply devote a small, a relatively small amount of money to finally putting this behind them and, more importantly, behind the world. The, the trouble is, of course, that they argue that they did do that, uh, you know, with the original settlement with the Indian government. Yes, they've also said that $500 is plenty good for an Indian. I'm quoting a PR head of Dow, uh, Kathy Hunt. She said that two years ago. $500 is... Uh, worth more in India than it is in, uh, say, the UK, but it still only pays for a year of medical care. The 12, 20, the 120,000 people that are estimated to need medical care because of the Bhopal catastrophe are going to need it their whole lives. They've well, already needed it for 20 years. There is, in the end, though, a very painful sting in today's tale in that uh, uh, the torchlit uh, uh, protest which appeared in, in Bhopal today thought for a moment that they had a, an extraordinary and unexpected uh, uh, gift from Dow, and it all turned out to be untrue, and, and indeed there were many people in tears tonight. Well, as I understood it, there were people in, in tears of joy when they found out, and indeed it's, it's, it is very sad that um, this isn't the case, but you have to realize that this is Dow's doing. I mean, Dow could make the tears of joy that there were real and and could prolong them it's it would be a very simple matter for Dow to do that